functional ingredients. Who knew what that was 10 years ago? Um, maybe, Daniel, you want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, do you think, why are we seeing such a rise in that? And is how big a part is educating the consumer about what they're eating? I think we're seeing a rise in it. We talk a lot about food tribes. So the one-size-fits-all consumer does not exist anymore, right? You're so fragmented. There's Whole30, but even within Whole30, there's like the Whole30 vegans, the Whole30 mm. um, carnivores, you know. Um, there are, there's paleo, there's autoimmune paleo, you know, like there are just so many eater groups. Um, really fun fact, I did this search on, on Facebook. Um, there are actually 40,000 people in this group for, that have backyard um, uh, rabbit um, farming for like meat. And there are 24 groups and one of them has 40,000 people. So there, people have really fragmented into these different interests. Um, so because of that, I think that people are starting companies to meet their needs of their tribe. Um, and, and by doing that, by traveling and just like looking for new exciting opportunities, I mean, as an industry, our goal is to delight people, right? To nourish and delight them. So if you can find new ingredients and new flavors as a way to do that, I think that you're starting to see that there's a lot of opportunity. Um, it is challenging as far as establishing new supply chains, but I think that's a great opportunity. Like, that's why you raise money. Raise money to go out and, and contribute to um, shifting a supply chain and introducing more diversity into our diets.